So at this time, we're going to hand the ball over to Catherine. She can go over the agenda. And remember that after uh, the presentation, just like always, we will have a Q&A session uh, where we will answer all your questions. Feel free to submit them to the Q&A box at any time during the presentation. Good morning, Catherine. Good morning. Um, How are you okay, doing today? first of, I'm doing good. How are you? Pretty good. Take it away. Okay, do you just want to make me the presenter then? Oh yeah, that might be important. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So, um first thing, um I'm just going to go ahead and cover the things that I'm going to talk about today. Um Actually, we'll just go right into it. Um, the first thing is examples of effective knowledge base articles. Uh, around the office and in talking to customers, uh, we came up with just a, a short list of some things that um, are effective and a lot of end users turn to the knowledge base for. Uh, just to go over a few examples uh, for an IT department, um, how to burn a CD, uh, maybe how to set up a VPN access, um, how to access email from home. A lot of times users are at home and can't remember the direct link or something like that. Uh, so you can have a knowledge base article about that. Um, a big one is how to change display preferences. Um, people don't do that very often, so it's, it's a good place to put that. Or maybe how to reset a password. Uh, we also have some customers using it in their human resources departments, meaning they're posting policies uh, online. Um, they're giving instruction on how to add benefits, how to add dependents, how to check coverage, if there's a certain way to request time off, maybe there's a form, uh, they have that on there and then they can go right to the form and send that to human resources, uh, as well as an employee handbook, maybe an expense report and some 401k forms. And we also can uh, do knowledge base articles and direct those right to the technician or the manager. And so you can have uh, different Instructions on maybe how to fix a problem that you're currently having on your network. Um, you could store types of passwords. If you have a certain password to maybe log in and fix uh, a certain program that you have, you can put that in there because that information would not be available to end users. So those are just a few examples of effective ones that we've seen. And I know that there's 10 times more out there. Uh, if you're gearing it right towards technicians, there's a lot of things that will be specific to your company. Or if you're gearing it uh, toward end users, it's usually just what your, your main questions are, things that end users can just walk themselves through uh, to fix that so that they don't have to put in a ticket. And that helps your technicians um, actually do work that they need to. Okay, so the next thing um, that I'm going to go to here, uh, and I'm going to log in or show you the login screen here, hopefully you can see that, um, is how to access the knowledge base articles. And there's two different ways. I mean, even if you have users, say they just do the email to ticket, and so they're not actually logging into the help desk. Uh, so they, you know, you can't just click on that knowledge base tab up there at the top. Um, if they just come right here to this login Catherine? screen, there is, yeah. We're still, we're still looking it? at the agenda slide. <laughs> okay, hold on. Sorry. Let me know when you see it. There we go. I see the login screen. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay, so here's the login screen. Um, and if your users are not actually logging in, like I said, they're just doing email the ticket. There is an option right here that says search knowledge base. So you can train them to still uh, come to this website and be able to look into the knowledge base for answers to their questions before actually submitting a ticket. Uh, and the other way, of course, I'm just going to go ahead and log in as a manager since we're going to be creating some. Uh, but the other way is if your users do actually log in, there is a tab here at the top that says knowledge base and they can click here to view what you've put in. So the next item I'm going to cover is how to do a search. Uh, it defaults right here uh, to all, but what you can click the down arrow here and you can see any group. So if I know that it's a policy that I'm looking for or I need to file an expense report, I can click in human resources and then in the search criteria you can type uh, whatever keywords you need to type in here. So I will just put expense 
let's see what comes up here. Uh, and then the default here is to search in the subject area, which if you're looking at these ones underneath here, um, right, the one that's in the, the blue is the subject area. And so if you leave it at subject, it's only going to search for things that are here. Uh, and then there is the body, and so that would be anything underneath. But you can also search in the subject and the body. Uh, subject and body is what most people do because it could be anywhere. You don't really know how they're created and exactly where they were put upon creation. And so then you would simply click search article. And here's this one uh, for an expense report. So then I could click on it, get the information, uh, please email this to this person when I'm finished, and then here is the attachment right here that I can access. Now, because I am the manager, it does say that I can edit this article. Um, and I also can, at any point, make this article private. What that means, just so that you know, um, when you make an article private, it's only viewable to technicians, managers, and the administrator, your users or your members are not going to see that. And so if you have information that you want to keep just with technicians and above, when you're creating these knowledge base articles, you will just want to make sure and mark those private. Now one big question that we have had quite often is how are items displayed? So when I come in here to the knowledge base, I guess it's not clearing this. When I click on the knowledge base, how, how am I going to see this? Because it, it didn't make a lot of sense to people. But um, the way that it's being displayed is by how many views. So if you look in this column over here, these two have been viewed two times. These have been viewed once. And so whatever has been viewed the, the most times is going to be here at the top. So as an IT department, if you want to see what the big things are that your users are going here and looking for, you can come and, and whatever's displayed at the top will show you how many times those have been viewed. So now I'm going to show how to just enter a new article. Um, right here, when clicking on the tab, all you're going to see are the knowledge base articles themselves. So there's a different way to actually add one. And to do that, you'll need to click on Settings. And then here you have these options on the left as a manager or a technician. And knowledge base article is one of them. So I click on it. All of my articles are going to display here in this list. And I can come in here at any time to edit those. So if we did have one that um, this expense report, you know, we wanted to edit that and maybe upload a new file, we can go in and delete it and upload the new one. But we're just going to create a new one. So you just click over here on New Article. And here you're going to select the group. So whatever group you want this to apply to, um, we'll just go ahead and leave it at Technology. Uh, and we're going to mark this one Private. This is where you would mark that if you only want your technicians or managers to be able to view this. So this will not be in view of the uh, end user. So here in the subject, again, that is what is going to display uh, in blue. So this will be the, the first thing that the eyes go to. Um, I'm just going to put a password for email reset. Uh, short description. Sometimes when you're uh, converting a ticket over to a knowledge base article, you're going to put here in the, in the description, you know, what the problem is or what the problem was. Uh, so like on the display, you know, the, the end user is seeing things too big and we need to change the display. And then you can put the resolution here below that. You don't have to use both of them. If you want to just put something in the short description, that's fine. But that's just what the difference between the two are. So I'm going to put the, the uh, I don't like the Patriots or anything. That, that's going to be the password to, to reset the email. And so when technicians come in, in here, they can see that. Um, they can also attach any, any attachment that they want to. It, so you just would simply click to choose the file. And then I'm just going to go ahead and attach that. And then you'll see it displayed right here. So you could attach multiple ones if you would like to. And then you'll just click Save and View. And then it will come up and show you what it looks like. Now, I only typed in two things, so it's not very long. And then here's the attachment here. So that's how to just create a new one right from the beginning. 
uh, but if you want to create them based on tickets. So let's say you're a technician and you're working your tickets, one gets resolved, and so you decide, you know, I'm going to make that a knowledge base article just so that if other technicians are possibly having the same issue, uh, they can go and search that out, or if it's something that maybe you want users to know, you can do that as well. So I want to show you when you're just looking at a ticket. I'm just going to edit this one. Right now, this ticket is, <clears throat> excuse me, this ticket is open, and so there is no button here that says convert to KB article. But as soon as I close this ticket. This button appears that says convert to KB article. And so all I have to do is click on that. And then you will have to do a little bit of editing uh, because what it's going to do when you do this, um, it's going to pull it into the same group that that ticket was originally put into. Right here under subject, this is going to be the exact subject of the subject that was in the ticket. So sometimes, you know, if the end user just types in, they might type in a whole sentence right there. And so you might want to edit that. Um, the short description, this equals uh, the notes. So whatever notes were entered in uh, on that ticket will display here. And then the resolution shows the actual history notes. So this is where you can see where we went and made all of these changes. And so this is probably what you're going to want to um, edit here. So to edit it, I mean, you can just highlight things and delete it just like you are in Word. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but if you want to leave some of the comments there as far as, you know, what you did um, to fix it and uh, you probably just want to delete, you know, if you were speaking with the end user, uh, stuff that they put in there. And so, again, you could upload an attachment if you want. It just goes the same, goes back to the same way as creating a new one, but the information is already put in there for you. So all you would do after that is click Save and View, and then it's going to show you what it looks like. Let's make this a little bigger here. Uh, so if you don't like how that looks, you can come back in here and edit the article and then save and view it again. Uh, there is also this button I didn't go over earlier, but to reset the view counter. counter. Um, like I said, when you logged in and you could see how many views something had, if you want to move it down to the bottom, say it's an issue that maybe you had for a, a little bit, but it's not quite so much an issue now, but so many people went in and looked at it, you want to move it, you can just click to reset that to zero and it can move it down to the bottom. And then at any time, if you want to remove an article, you can do it from within the article here itself. Um, or again, you can click on Settings and Knowledge Base Article, just like when you're going to go create a, a brand new one. Edit that and then remove it here. So there's two ways to access it. Um, when you're switching a ticket from a ticket to a Knowledge Base Article, um, what you really need to do is just edit those the resolution area, the history notes, uh, because it is going to bring, you know, if you changed a status, uh, if the user sent you an email, if you responded to that, all of that data is going to be in there. So the resolution area is one place that you are really going to want to edit uh, if you're switching a ticket over to a knowledge base article. So I think that that's about it. Knowledge base articles are um, pretty simple, pretty easy to use. Uh, the biggest part is training your users on actually to go there and access that information instead of um, calling your IT department or putting in a ticket for everything. So, Keaton, I will turn that back over to you. Thank you so much, Catherine. A lot of good info there. Um, as we usually do, we're going to take just a 60-second break to let you type in your questions. Um, we've had... A couple come in, and oh, I just saw another one come in, but we're going to give you just a couple seconds to type them in the Q&A box, if you would, and then we'll get to answering those. So we'll take a minute break right here.
Okay, so we've had a couple questions come in. Um, the first one I'll answer is from Lisa. Can you create your own groups? I'm assuming you're talking about groups in the knowledge base. These are the same groups that are in the help desk. Um, so yes, any groups that are created in the help desk will be in the knowledge base. And as long as you have the rights to create that group, it's no problem. Um, Catherine's going to answer the next couple of questions. So I will hand the ball over okay. to her. Keaton, will you just make me the presenter so that I can show one of these? Um, the question from yeah. Kelly is, can you print the article? And the answer to that is no, you can't print the article out. But you can email the article. And I will show you where that is on the bottom of the screen. Um, so you could email it to yourself or if somebody maybe had a question on it and they needed to follow the um, the instructions there, you could email it to them. So when viewing a knowledge base article, down at the bottom right here where it says email, you can pick different um, sections. You could just give them the entire page of what you're viewing here or just a link to um, the site so that they could read it that way. So you could just type in an email here and then send it, and then that will send it to them. 